In a quaint village nestled in the English countryside, there lived a woman named Lady Eleanor. Known for her impeccable manners and eloquent speech, she was a pillar of the community. Her ability to articulate her thoughts with precision earned her the nickname, the Queen of English. Lady Eleanor had spent years refining her language skills, drawing inspiration from classic literature and the eloquence of the British aristocracy. Her home, a charming cottage adorned with ivy and wildflowers, was often the gathering place for locals eager to learn the art of conversation from her. Every Tuesday, she hosted Tea and Talk, where villagers discussed topics ranging from the weather to Shakespeare. One rainy Tuesday, a newcomer arrived in the village. Thomas, a young man from a bustling city, was seeking solace from his hectic life. He entered Lady Eleanor's cottage, drenched and slightly disheveled, yet his eyes sparkled with curiosity. The villagers welcomed him, intrigued by his rugged charm. As the discussions flowed, Thomas struggled to keep up with the eloquence of the conversation. He was used to the colloquial speech of his city and felt out of place among the refined dialogue. Lady Eleanor noticed his discomfort and invited him to share his thoughts. Well, I just think, uh, it's nice here, he stammered, his voice thick with an accent that contrasted sharply with the Queen's English spoken around him. The villagers exchanged glances, some smirking, but Lady Eleanor smiled warmly. And what is it you find nice about it, Thomas? His hesitation faded as he spoke about the lush fields, the sweet scent of blooming flowers, and the peace that enveloped the village. Lady Eleanor listened intently, her eyes gleaming with appreciation for his genuine sentiments. Your perspective is invaluable, she said. Language is not merely a set of rules, it's a way to express who we are. Every accent, every phrase has its beauty. Encouraged, Thomas began to participate more, sharing anecdotes from his life, using his distinct vernacular. Lady Eleanor gently corrected his grammar and encouraged him to expand his vocabulary. The villagers, initially dismissive, began to see the charm in his straightforwardness, realizing that language could bridge gaps rather than create them. As weeks turned into months, Thomas transformed. With Lady Eleanor's guidance, he learned to blend his natural style with the nuances of the Queen's English. He became a favorite among the villagers, known not only for his insights but also for his unique flair. One evening, Lady Eleanor announced a grand event, a village gathering to celebrate the diversity of language. It would feature poetry, stories, and speeches in various dialects, showcasing the beauty of communication in all its forms. The villagers were enthusiastic, eager to contribute. On the night of the event, Thomas took the stage, heart racing but determined. He recited a poem he had crafted, weaving together his urban experiences with the rich tapestry of the village. 
The audience listened, captivated by his raw authenticity. When he finished, a thunderous applause erupted. Lady Eleanor beamed with pride. Language is alive, she declared, and it thrives in our differences. From that day forward, the village celebrated not only the elegance of the Queen's English but also the authenticity of every voice. Lady Eleanor had not only taught them the importance of eloquence but had also opened their hearts to the richness of diversity. The Queen's English was no longer a mere standard, it was a melody composed of many voices.